Okay, let's go ahead and start a new project to take a look at some handy tips on content and layout. So I'm going to click on create a new project and let's go ahead and take a look at one of these uh, templates that we've got here. Let's go ahead and take a look at maybe the business card template. That's an easy one to start with. So I'll type in here my card and then I'll press the create project now button and here we go. All right, I'm going to get rid of this project size pane so we can just sort of see what we're doing here. All right. Now for content, some of the advice that I have is to use the right format for your project. So it's good to take a look. We have a support for different formats and it's good to take a look at which one's going to be the best. So if you're putting out a CD-ROM and you have a lot of extra room, you might not have to worry about that. But if you're going to be distributing your application on the web, you might want to look at optimizing your resources and keeping them nice and small. So for example, with audio, um, you can add a WAV file or you can add an AUG file. An AUG file is typically going to be really, really good, and it's going to be just at a fraction of the file size, so uh, that's going to be probably the selection for people who are distributing via web, whereas somebody who's uh, got maybe a 20 meg or a 40 meg WAV file might not worry about that if they're distributing on a CD or DVD-ROM. So that's one aspect. Now with images, for example here you can see that there's a soft shadow around the edge. If you want that shadow to be completely transparent against whatever background you have, then you have to export with an alpha channel. So that means exporting as ping 24 from your image editor. If you're not worried about that transparency, then you can export as a, a static GIF or a JPEG or a bitmap or any of those other formats. And basically, my advice is just to take a look at the different formats and make sure that you're choosing the one that gives you the right balance between quality and file size for your functionality. Okay, let's take a look at some layout tips here. As you can see here, um, I've left quite a bit of room around the edges of this thing. Now let's actually take a look at a preview of this project first, then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, there we go. So this is what the project looks like when it runs. It's in kiosk mode, so that means the window stretches right to the edge of the possible window there. And it basically has a lot of white space, and it's a really effective way to give people your basic information. Now, some of the content tips I have here are to leave enough room around the edges of things, and that goes for every application. Always leave a bunch of room and gaps between things to make them nice and readable, and you can still make them tie together by laying them out properly, but at the same time, give them a little bit of breathing room. And one of the interesting things that we've done here is we've incorporated text that was created in Photoshop, such as the text on the back of the card here, with text that was created in Autoplay Media Studio, such as the address here, the email link, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of neat. You, you don't really see the line uh, between the two. But some of the... Let's go ahead and exit this and go back to Autoplay Media Studio. Some of the things we did here to increase the effectiveness of the layout was to keep those gaps. So for example, if I size this text up a bit here, and move it back, you can see it's not as effective. It, it tends to encroach here on the, the web link. So I'm going to go ahead and move it back. Just undo that. And we've left nice gaps between everything here so that each element has a chance to, um, you know, do what it has to do without being uh, crowded by other elements. And in addition to that, we've also used color to delineate some of the layout elements here. For example, we've got our web link and our email link in blue with our address and other information in black, and that gives you a, a visual delineation between the two. So those are some of the effective layout techniques we've used here. Another thing we've done is we've angled the card in the back here. So what we've done is kind of made it so that it's not drawing your attention quite as quickly as the front part here. So you still read this back part, but your eye is drawn to this front part first. So you might want to use that, which is Z order, they call that, front to back order, and maybe fade out some of the text in the back, so on and so forth, using these little visual clues to add depth to your project. I don't want to get too aesthetic. Those are some basics of how you can really optimize the content and layout of your projects. If you have any specific questions on this stuff, meet us in the forum and we'll be happy to help you out anytime. The templates that come with Autoplay Media Studio, let's take another quick look at those are really effectively laying out. So they're a great place to come for layout advice and to sort of, uh, even if you don't want to use those templates as they are, uh, to use as a basic building block for something of your own. So for example, the corporate template here. 
I'll just type corporate. Has a, a certain style to it. And if you want to apply that same style, expand our workspace, there we go. If you'd like to apply that same style to your project, you might want to come in here and just use this as a guide to build your own project off. We've used a variety of different aspects here. For example, we've uh, uh, we've got some transparent imagery. We've got some color against the black there for drama, for contrast. We've got some rotated text here. We've got these button objects that we made in Photoshop and so on and so forth. So anyway, that's some effective tips on content and layout. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let's go ahead and go on to the next lesson now.